Compact sedans are becoming rarer and rarer nowadays and those who choose a compact sedan over an SUV or a crossover would normally have handling and performance at the top of their priorities list. Now there are some people who want a compact sedan that is both unique and sporty and for those people we have the Kia Forte GT. So if you're the adventurous type and you decide to go for the Kia Forte GT versus the usual suspects like the Honda Civic or the Toyota Corolla, the Forte GT will reward you handsomely for choosing it. How so? Well, that's what we aim to find out in this video. Let's do this. Hello guys, I'm Reagan and welcome back to another car review. If you're new to my channel, I hope you click that subscribe button and become part of the Reagan Strides family. If you're my subscriber already, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh, and yeah, click that like button as well. Also special thanks to Kia Philippines for lending us the Kia Forte GT for this car review. If you have any inquiries for any of the Kia vehicles, you may check out all of their dealers nationwide. The Kia Forte, or the Kia Cerato in other markets, has been Kia's compact sedan offering since 2008. It's a highly capable vehicle, most especially in this top-spec GT trim. Now, the Forte GT came out as an update last 2020, and it has a retail price of 1,650,000 Philippine pesos. Now, that may seem like a bit too expensive for a top-spec compact sedan, but do remember that you are getting a ton of performance parts in this Kia Forte GT trim. I mean, dual clutch transmission pa lang eh, ulam na. Now despite the top end pricing of the Kia Forte GT, as I mentioned, you are getting a lot of car for your money. The third generation Forte has been designed by Peter Schreier, the same man behind the design of the venerable Kia Stinger GT. You'll see a lot of Stinger influences in the design of the Forte GT to the point that even people in Kia themselves are calling the Forte GT the baby Stinger. Now, I'm not seeing anything baby about this car, so I'd rather call it the Stinger Lite. Now, just like the Stinger, the Forte GT also gets a slim tiger nose front grille here that is finished in black chrome. The grille also has some red accents there, which adds on to its uh, sporty look. In fact, those red accents look kind of bloody to me, so we could say that the Forte GT has a bloody tiger nose front grille, like it just came from a fight. Now, the Forte GT also has a unique set of LED DRLs inside the headlight housing. These are in an X-shaped format and it frames the LED headlights. To say that it is unique is an understatement. Now, when you move down to the size of the front bumper, you get functional side air vents here which help serve cool air into your brakes. Now, I've come to appreciate that about these uh, new Kia vehicles. They always have functional air vents in the front bumper and that is something that I've appreciated with these cars. Now, the Forte GT also comes with a turn signal here in this triangular um, cutout on the front bumper and we also have a glossy black front spoiler here or front lip which adds to its uh, sporty nature. You also get a couple of halogen fog lights there and when you look at the entire front fascia of this uh, for the GT. I was about to say Subaru WRX. You see, this car, the front fascia, reminds me of the Subaru WRX. Now, it's probably because of the way these uh, sporty elements combine together, plus the fact that the Forte GT also has a blacked out center part here in the front bumper, which is similar to that venerable rally car. Now, the side profile of the Kia Forte GT ties it closer to its uh, bigger brother, the Kia Stinger GT. We have here a sloping, sleek, sportback design at the rear end, which is pretty similar to its larger brother. Now, the Forte GT gets a power folding blacked out side mirrors here with LED turn signals, and we also don't get any chrome on the window sills. These are all blacked out exactly how I want it to be. Now, it also comes with a subtle looking side skirt here, which adds a bit more of that sporty flavor. But when you check out the wheels, you'll notice that the wheels are a bit on the small side. 
These are 17 inch wheels and the wrapped in 22545 R17 tires. Being a top spec uh, Grand Tourer, the Kia Forte GT should come in 18 inch wheels at least. Well, but we only get the 17s here. Now, behind those wheels, you get four wheel disc brakes. We've got ventilated disc up front and solid disc at the back. Now, the suspension bits is also tuned more towards the sporty side because we get a MacPherson setup in the front and an independent multi link rear suspension at the back. Now that's different from the lower trim Fortis in the country, the EX and the LX, because those two lower trims only get a rear torsion beam. But here we get a fully independent multi-link rear suspension system. Now the ground clearance, surprisingly, is a bit uh, taller for a performance-oriented compact sedan. The ground clearance of the Forte GT stands at 135 millimeters, which should make it easy to clear some of the higher speed bumps that we have here in the country. Now the rear end of the Kia Forte GT is where things get a tad too busy and a lot sportier in fact. Now the first thing you'll notice is this subtle rear ducktail spoiler here that's painted in black which I must admit looks quite good. Now the LED taillights also are really gorgeous. It's as if they've been designed by an LED taillight design master because wow, I am loving these LED taillight units. Now these taillights are also connected by a reflectorized center strip here in the middle which goes well with the black and white color scheme of this Forte GT um, media unit that I have. Now when you go down to the rear bumper, that's where things get, well, a tad too busy at least for my taste. Now, the Forte GT gets a triangular cutouts here at the sides of the rear bumper which houses your turn signals and your reverse lights which uh, to be honest guys I would rather that they just uh, remove that and keep things clean on this on the sides of the rear bumper. Uh, I know what uh, Kia is trying to do here. Uh, the Honda Civic Type R also has these uh, fake um, rear vents that are found in the rear bumper but yeah I, let's just say that the look is polarizing some people might like it, some people might not. And in this case, I'm in that camp where I'm, I don't really like it too much. And the reason behind that is the way they designed the lower part of the rear bumper. You see, the, the design of the lower part of the rear bumper is already enough. It's gorgeous as it is. We get a red center strip here in the center. And we also have some uh, faux rear diffusers. Uh, designed into the lower part of the rear bumper plus we also have dual actual oval exhaust pipes so just that detail those details found underneath the rear bumper for me is already enough we don't really need to include these triangular um, inlets or cutouts on the sides of the rear bumper it it just gives me a feeling that it's a bit too much well that is just my opinion now when you pop open the trunk you get one of the larger trunk capacities in the compact sedan category. We have here 502 liters of cargo capacity. And as you can see, my medium-sized luggage is already there and it easily fits inside this trunk. In fact, you can put a second one beside it and you'd still have space on the sides for smaller items. Now, if 502 liters is not enough, you could tumble down the seat backs of the second row and that expands your space to almost twice as much. But do keep in mind that the seat backs don't fold flat to the floor. So that's also something that you should consider with this Forte GT. In a country where the vehicle's engine outputs are going down and down, all for the sake of fuel economy, the engine and the transmission combination of the Forte GT is a breath of fresh air. Now what we get here is a 1.6 liter 4 banger turbocharged gasoline engine that can put out 201 horsepower and 265 newton meters of torque. Now that makes the Kia Forte GT the most powerful compact sedan in the segment, well except for the Honda Civic Type R and the Subaru WRX STI, which you'll have to pay twice as much in order to get those vehicles. Now, all of the power of this Forte GT would have been wasted if it came with a CVT. But luckily, Kia Philippines brought in the Forte GT with a 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. Now, that is a brilliant option for its powertrain because the buyers for the Kia Forte GT, I mean, these guys don't really prioritize on fuel economy or efficiency, but rather they would go for outright performance. 
Now, that's not saying that the Forte GT is a gas guzzler because during the few days that this car stayed with me, I was able to get 8.5 kilometers per liter in the city and as much as 16 kilometers per liter in the highway. Now, granted, that was a bit of an economy run, a fuel economy run, but if you want to maximize on the full potential of this engine and that transmission, well, that highway fuel economy goes down to 12 kilometers per liter. The cockpit of the Forte GT has touches of the Stinger GT, but it pulled back in some areas to keep the cost in check. The seats are also wrapped in leather and you do get some nice uh, red piping and red contrast stitching here as well as a GT emblem on the seat back. However, we don't get heat or ventilation features on these seats but at least we do get power adjustments on both the driver and the passenger side. Now the seats also have the perfect amount of bolstering. It's uh, just good enough to hold you and support you as you're taking a corner in a fast clip but not too aggressive that it will force you to take a diet. Now the steering wheel of the Forte GT is exactly in the same design as the Kia Stinger GT which means that we get some really nice uh, leather wrap uh, material here. We've got some perforated leather on the sides and some contrast red stitching plus a flat bottom and a GT badge at the lower part. Again, similar to the Stinger GT. Now, we do get uh, hands-free buttons here for connectivity as well as cruise control and a pair of paddle shifters that are hiding behind the wheel. It's really nice that they gave us paddle shifters in the Forte GT. Now, the wheel also adjusts for tilt and also telescopes. So, finding the perfect driving position is actually going to be a cinch. Now, the instrument gauge cluster is a combination of analog and calculator. Uh, I mean digital <laughs> because we got an analog tag and an analog speedo but we have a tiny black and white uh, multi-information display in the middle that kind of resembles well a uh, calculator's font however despite the the dated appearance of that multi-information display it still gives you all your vital vehicle information including stuff that you didn't know that you needed like the transmission temperature I mean that's pretty cool, especially since this is a dual clutch transmission. Now, when you move over to your infotainment system, we have here, a, well, a decently sized um, infotainment system. You've got an 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system, although the touch uh, capacity of the screen is not really as uh, quick or as intuitive as the other touchscreens that I've, uh, I've encountered, but it would do the job well. The good thing there is it also has physical knobs and buttons here in case you're having a bit of an an issue with the touchscreen itself. Now, the infotainment system does have Apple CarPlay. It also comes with Android Auto, so those are also good things. And we also have the image of the reverse camera here, which is also of a decent uh, image quality. It's going to be quite usable. Now, from your infotainment system, we go down to your fully automatic dual zone climate control system here. That's also good to have. And we have here, uh, well, a cubby that is supposed to house a wireless uh, charging port, but we don't get that in the Philippines. Rather, we just get the usual USB port, 12 volt outlet, and the other, uh, well, another USB port here, plus a large cubby where you could park some of your stuff. Now, beside the gear shifter, you also have your button for your drive mode because the Kia Forte GT comes with an eco mode, a normal mode, and a smart mode for managing your, uh, well, your driving uh, efficiency. Now, if you want to go into sport mode, it's in the gear shifter, you just uh, push it to the left and that engages sport mode already. Now, we also have a traditional manual handbrake here, which is a welcome sight inside the cockpit of the Kia Forte GT. Now, this is a Grand Tourer uh, and a performance-oriented sedan, so I would prefer to have an actual manual handbrake here. Now, this uh, gives it a touch of a sporty flavor, even if this is a front-wheel drive vehicle. <laughs> I mean, that manual handbrake would come in handy if it came in the Kia Stinger GT, which is a rear-wheel drive, but we have a front-wheel drive here. But at least we still have this. I love that we have this. Now, beside that handbrake, we have a couple of cup holders here, which we will subject to our clean canteen test. And you can see, boom, it passes with flying colors. It completely fits my clean canteen. So that's also a bit of good news there. 
We also have a center armrest here that's been wrapped in leather, but the leather quality is a bit on the durable side, a little bit uh, pebbly and knob knobby to me, but it does have a large uh, compartment here that also has another charging port, which is good because we don't get USBs at the back. So your passengers at the back can use this uh, USB port for charging. Now, when you look at the entire cockpit area of the Forte GT, you do get a lot of nice soft touch materials. Uh, the top of the dashboard is wrapped in leather and it, it even has some stitching here. You've got some uh, brushed aluminum finish garnish here on the center of the dashboard and uh, the lower part of the dashboard is still soft touch plastic. Now the door cards also have a uh, leather wrapping on them and it even has a nice contrast red stitching on the elbow rest. So the fit and finish is of good quality. Uh, this uh, media unit has over 13,000 kilometers on it already, but during the several days that I've driven this, I've not heard any, you know, any annoying creaks or rattles that you would uh, expect from, let's say, a substandard vehicle. There's none of that here in the Kia Forte GT. Uh, this thing is solidly built with premium materials that, well, to be honest, isn't really that expected in a compact sedan, but well, it's still here. So hallelujah, right? Now, if the cockpit area of the Kia Forte GT felt premium and upscale and punched above its weight, well, the back seat feels low rent and kind of budget. Now, all right, I have to quantify that, guys. It doesn't mean that you get monoblock seats or plastic seats here at the back. But still, we do get the same leather quality, leather, leather seats here, the same quality that's found in the front. But we don't get the same leather wrap materials on the door cards of the rear doors. These are hard plastics, all right? We do get uh, some leather, padded leather here for the elbows, which is also good. But the seat backs of the front seats are also hard plastics and you don't even get actual seat back pockets here. We don't get any of that on the driver's seat. Now, the good thing though is despite scrimping on the quality of materials here at the back, we do get some useful toys. We have a couple of rear AC vents here at the back, something that I didn't expect at all in a compact sedan, but we have that and that is a godsend, especially in the hot tropical country that we live in. Now, we don't get a USB charging port as I mentioned a while ago, but we do have a USB charging port inside the center console, so you could use that if you're stuck here at the back. Now, we also have a center armrest here which, which also has a couple of cup holders so yeah that just about wraps it up and of course there's isofix anchors here at the back now uh, kia for the gt is meant to be driven and at this time we're now going to take this vehicle out for a drive on the highway Alright guys, so we're now driving the Kia Forte GT and first off guys, this is a 4-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine but as I accelerate this car, listen to that engine sound. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that? I mean this despite being a four banger sounds like a v8 <laughs> it's crazy the engine note reminds me of a ford mustang of all things yeah a v8 ford mustang i mean i don't know what sort of dark magic that uh, kia did with a ford gt but man this is one hell of a good sounding engine now, I'm going to list down the safety bits of the Forte GT and while you're reading, listen to that symphony of that engine once again. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah! Woo! <laughs> anyway, Time to take it back down to more sensible speeds, guys. And I do hope that you've finished um, yeah, reading the, the safety bits of the Forte GT because that is a mouthful 
and I'm not going to memorize that anymore for you. Just read it, guys. <laughs> now, since we're on the highway, I'm going to share with you also the acceleration uh, personality or characteristic of this car. You see, it's a dual clutch transmission, and uh, being a dual clutch, you just have to have a nice and smooth throttle input, and the acceleration is quite quick. Granted, when you are in normal mode, it will take a, a split second to, to recognize that you want to put the hammer down and that's when it will give you a downshift and that's when this car will give you the goods. But in sport mode, the response is way quicker. And I also noticed that the steering feel kind of stiffens up when you go into sport mode. Now, while on the subject of uh, steering, well, the steering feel of this Forte GT is hefty. At slow parking lot speeds, you might be uh, a bit surprised when you feel how uh, hefty and how, uh, it's a bit on the heavy side, in fact. It's not like it's too heavy, like it feels like, like you're driving a truck. Uh, it doesn't feel that way, but it is hefty enough to make you know that you've got uh, slightly, uh, well, wider tires up front. Well, these are 17-inch uh, wheels, but we've got 225s wrapping those wheels. So that is, uh, you know, that's a bit wide for that size of a tire. The thing is, as you go up to the highway, I'm happy to also say that uh, the steering feel doesn't really lighten up too much. It lightens up a bit, but not enough to make you lose some confidence when you're driving at a faster clip. Now, handling performance is decent for a performance-oriented compact sedan. You see, Kia tuned this with a little bit more performance in mind, but still, well, bias more towards uh, comfort. And that's actually a good balance, if you were to ask me, because this thing would see more, you know, more driving duties as a daily driver than an actual Canyon Carver or a Track Monster. Now, having said that, this thing could uh, competently carve mountains and canyons as well but maybe not as good as a proper rear-wheel drive car because the Forte GT is still a front-wheel drive car, so we have to consider that. But as a front-wheel drive compact sedans go, this is one of the better handling ones, especially for the price you're paying. You'll have to go up uh, twice as much as this in order to get a sharper handling front-wheel drive car, and the car I'm talking about is the Honda Civic Type R. Now for the more pedestrian aspects of the Forte GT. When it comes to visibility, well, I'm quite surprised that visibility is pretty decent. The windshield is raked back through, but the dashboard is mounted quite low and the seating position is also decently high. So it doesn't feel like I am uh, being, I, I was swallowed by the car. It feels like I'm sitting on top of the seat, not inside the seat, and that's also quite good. Now, sideways visibility, also pretty decent. And when it comes to the NVH, we are in the highway now, and I am filming uh, quite well here. Uh, there is um, a little noise, but not too much, not too much. It's not like at the same level as a, let's say, a premium uh, executive sedan, but it is way, way better than any city car or budget city car out there yeah but overall nvh really solid there are no creaks and rattles inside this uh, media unit already has over 13,000 kilometers on the mileage so yeah this is hardly a brand new car guys but it's solidly built and that's one of one of the things that i love about these new kias nowadays you know they really build solid cars i mean it feels premium even if you're not paying the premium price now, some of you would also be asking me in the comments about the air conditioning or climate control. Well, you'd be happy to know that this unit doesn't even have any window tint on it, but the climate control system is really good. It's cold. I'm, only, I'm not even at the coldest setting, but I am nice and cool inside this cabin. So yeah, the climate control system, it's really, really good. Overall, guys, well, this Kia Forte GT is a true performance alternative to the other mainstream choices out there, namely the Honda Civic and the Toyota Corolla Altis. Well, it uh, really delivers the goods in such a value-laden package. And I believe that the only other uh, compact sedan in the market that could probably equal its handling capability is the Mazda 3. 
but even that car might have a problem trying to keep up with this thing because well 201 horses <laughs> and that v8 sounding engine that by itself is already worth a second look when it comes to the kia for the gt i mean come on guys <laughs> who doesn't want a v8 sounding engine in under their hood even if they're just driving a four banger right <laughs> The Kia Forte GT is one of the best kept secrets in the performance compact sedan segments because it outperforms most, if not all, of the usual offerings in the country. It truly amazes me guys how so few people know of this fantastic car. I mean, yeah, it's a niche vehicle, but it gives you true performance for a front-wheel drive car owing to its potent turbocharged engine and that brilliant dual-clutch transmission. So, if you're in the market for a sport-oriented compact sedan, do yourself a favor and check out the Kia Forte GT. I'm pretty sure that you're going to thank me for giving you that advice. Anyway, thanks for watching.